Usually when we are done rendering any 3D scene, we end up with not so much satisfying raw render, so what we do is edit this final result with editing software like Photoshop, Lightroom or anything else, to present our work with the utmost finest, and this process that might take 5 to 10 minutes is essential in the 3D world, so you need to learn at least the basic of it which we will explain in this video. So here we have a render of an exterior scene we did on the channel, and the tutorial for this one should pops up on the top right corner as a video tag. So go watch it if you want and just put this on the watch list, the image we will work on is also in the description if you want to follow along with us. Now to start of we usually make a copy of the image before working on it, so just right click on the layer and select duplicate layer. Then hit OK, we will hide the back layer for now, so, with the top layer, let's say you need to change the sky, seeing it after render and you notice it's a bit boring, what we do is easy, we're gonna select the top layer then double click on it to open the blending option, here in the bottom you see two sliders, and what we need to do is remove the blue out of the image. So first we need to put the blending on the blue rather than the default grey, then we can select the top slider and move it back to get rid of the sky in the image. Now you will notice that this method take with it some other colors, the bright ones. However we can bring them back later and with easy fix, the important thing here is remove the sky as much as possible near the tree areas, so, let us zoom in near this palm tree and fix the area, to keep the color transition smooth we need to split the slider and with those two we can move them apart until we have a feeling of a clean area. Once we're done with the blending option, we can hit OK and import any sky to place it in the background, so surf online and you can find many free ones. I will use this image from Pexels, so let us click and drag it over the render image, scale it to fit the area, and place it down in the bottom of the layer section. Some of the area removed by the blending process is still transparent, so to fix this, we need to unhide the original layer 1, then use it to bring back the missing parts, and we can do that with easy step. First, select the layer 1 and hold the ALT key to add a negative mask on it, this way we hide it again, then using this mask we can draw on it with a white brush to bring back the wanted parts, so select the black mask, put the color on white, and use the brush to draw over the needed area, the process should take less than a minute to fix any image you working on. Now before we continue, let us create a new layer from the previous ones by hitting the shortcut on the screen, after that, to add anything to the shot, we simply need it to be cut on the side, so here I have those planes and the birds cut out which you can find online as a PNG format image, once I have them opened on the side, I can select anything I need and drag it over the image I am working on, then we can scale it to fit the scene, move it around to any needed area, and cut the unwanted area either by using masks or by simply select and delete it.
When we add moving things to the shot just make sure to give it some motion blurriness. Back again here, we can select one of those airplanes, drag it over our shot, then we can scale it to fit and place it in the needed area. Now with this plane, we can add a curve adjustment layer, and work it around to fix the light on it. It won't appear much here since the plane is small, still you need to learn this. To make this adjustment layer affect the plane only, we can hold the Alt key and hover between it and the plane layer until we see a small arrow, or by hitting this small arrow on the adjustment setting. I will close some of those windows just to make the layer section clear so hold with me a bit. Now to add some white trail behind the plane, we can simply add a new layer, then using the brush, draw a line behind the plane. When we added the last layer it got assigned over the curve, so just make sure the new layer don't have the small arrow near it, that means it won't draw over anything but the layer under it. To fix this hover under the last layer while holding the ALT key and with mouse click we can bring it back to normal. Once we draw a white line, we can hit Ctrl T and scale down its end, we will also need to give this some transparency and some blurriness. I think the trail should start clear but disappear near its end, so to make that, I will use the gradient tool. Then by adding a mask to the trail layer, we can draw a gradient to make the white line fade toward its end. Again once we are done here, we can join the previous layers in one to continue working on it, with the new layer. Let us go to filters and select the camera or filter, with this one, I will first split the screen so you see the difference before and after the filter. In the first tab, starting with the first slider, we can add more of a worm or cold feeling to the shot. Under it we can adjust the exposure, the contrast and highlights of the image, and all this depend on the image itself so there's no specific numbers. I usually start with 0.4 as exposure since I will give it 15 contrast. With the clarity let us make it 22, the vibrance will take a similar value to enhance the colors in the scene, and the dehaze will be 8 to mix the last two together, the new photoshop versions have a texture slider so use that if you have it, it should enhance the textures in your shot.
In the second tab, we can use this curve to fix the light layers on the image, so I'm just adding some whiteness to the skyline. With the last tab I usually crack up both the sharpness and the noise reduction sliders to around 45, you can go with less values to keep some blurriness in your shot, there are also bunch of other things that you can go around to fix your shot, but for today those are the basic ones for me. Once we are done with the camera or filter, just hit OK. Now last thing on this image, we will use a LUTs, it's simply a color filter over your image, and you can search online for free ones. I like this one so I will use it here, and make the opacity on 40, that's it. We went from a boring render to an awesome image in just couple of minutes. And this one is now ready to present, hope this tutorial been useful to you, hit the like button and leave me your thoughts down in the comments, and see you next time, stay sharp, goodbye.